raise corn, soybeans, and wheat on a three-year rotation. Uh, we've been 100% no-till for the last about 12 years. Uh, before that, uh, my father-in-law had the operation and they did a modified no-till, did a little bit of tillage and less and less as time went on. Probably started, he probably started no-tilling a lot of this ground in some fashion about 30 years ago. So we're really just trying to figure out what the corn crop needs when, uh, starting to understand that more isn't always better, trying to keep things in a better balance and trying to get more nutrients out of the ground into the crop. So that is, that's kind of been our focus this year and our focus moving forward. We're starting to develop that baseline of tissue test that's becoming popular. Uh, now we're just starting to develop that using our contest fields and using some, um, some test areas within the fields, trying to pick up on uh, when, when we may need to supplement some things, even though we think it's okay in the soil. If it shows up a little light in the plant, is that just the way it is or can we do something about that? So this field that we're standing at here is, we've got quite a few trials going on in this field this year. See if we can learn anything about uh, some later, even though uh, the soil tests are good and the soil tests are, academically they're more than sufficient. Is there certain times through the growing season where maybe putting a little potash on would help or putting a little sulfur on would help or trying to get it to change those tissue tests a little bit and then see if we get a yield response. Uh, we have two kind of things going on. The one end of the field behind me, the trial is just regular commercially available dry fertilizer products. And uh, my youngest son was happy to help push the spin spreader through uh, shoulder high corn. Uh, for about four hours one day, and we just laid out a bunch of plots along with the university. Del Voigt, our local extension agent, uh, and through the soil specialist at Penn State, they laid out that trial, and that's kind of behind me here. And then on the other side, we have a little bit different approach, uh, working uh, with Drew Haynes out of Maryland, and um, it's a more micro, uh, micronutrient based approach uh, for that end of the field, seeing if we get any response. Uh, we didn't mix the two yet. So right now, uh, like I said, we have the micros kind of thing down this way and then behind me is just kind of the old school uh, commercially available kinds of things. We've tried different components from different companies in the past, be it on corn or soybeans or wheat even. Uh, you know, this little micronutrient here, or this micro there, uh, this supposedly stimulant, and never really got much to work. And that's where uh, John and I were talking earlier and I said, you know, this year we came back from Commodity Classic and we said, all right, we're gonna just try a whole program, um, trying to care for the corn from beginning to end. I, I realized at Commodity Classic, a lot of guys are talking about the end, the brown silk and on, and that's where we're at here now. Um, we're brown silk. We just did our last application with the helicopter uh, it, it, last Friday, about five days ago here. We did our last application with the helicopter trying to, again, just do the whole program from beginning to end to see if we can get some kind of a, a yield response because we, we didn't get it in pieces. We also had never done the end. Uh, once the corn, we would do a fungicide application, a tassel fungicide app, but then that was kind of it. So this is the first year we're really trying to feed the crop through the end, so to speak, and uh, we'll see. It'll, before long here, we'll know. Fungicides here are very hit and miss. 
Uh, we've done quite a few fungicide trials for uh, different companies and we've seen everything from zero bushel response to a 35 bushel response. So, and what I've learned is it's very difficult to predict. I'm very fortunate to have a lot of agronomists that are part of our team, um, our pioneer dealer, our decal dealer, uh, some private agronomists. Uh, they're all looking at our crops for us and very difficult to predict at the time when it's time to apply the fungicide it's difficult to predict if it's going to make a difference or not uh, based on the checks that we've done and that my neighbors have done sometimes when we don't think there's going to be a response that's when we get the biggest response uh, it's almost like something comes up and sucker punches the crop at the end that's when we get the biggest response. Everything looked good, and then all of a sudden this comes in where if they go out and they say, yeah, it's here, spray, it's almost like the crop has been adjusting to it, so to speak. And, and then sometimes it's there, we spray, and we don't get much of a response. So very difficult. We've learned it's very difficult to predict, so we try and do it on a regular basis anymore just uh, that's what time has taught us about the fungicides is try and do it on a regular basis and that kind of evens out our risk some years we don't make much on it some years we do pretty well on it some years we might lose a little on it but it evens us out uh, and that's kind of our approach to the fungicides right now